Alex, would you care to show us your official Band 9 certificate? So here is my certificate. Again, these questions are similar to the ones that appeared on Trang's IELTS exam. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. I have a very special guest with me here today, Miss Trang from Vietnam, who has scored an amazing band nine on the speaking section of her most recent IELTS exam. And we are going to find out exactly how she did it and recreate the interview with similar questions. Welcome, Miss Trang. Hi, thank you for having me. As we get going, I'd like to ask a few questions just to get to know you a little bit better. Can you tell us where you are from? Okay, so I'm from Vietnam, originally from a small town in central Vietnam, but now I'm based in Hanoi. Again, these questions are similar to the ones that appeared on Trang's IELTS exam just recently. Pay attention carefully to parts one, two, and three. Notice the use of vocabulary, natural language, great pronunciation. Here we go. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. For part one, I will ask you some questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? So at the moment, I'm working as a freelance content creator, which, if I'm being honest, doesn't help much with paying the bills because, as you know, there is no guarantee that I'm going to get a fixed amount of work every month. Is your job stressful? Mm, yes, sometimes it can be. Uh, when a lot of clients want to work with me, to collaborate with me at the same time, there is an overwhelming amount, uh, number of assignments coming in. So the workload can be uh, too much to bear. Are your morning routines different on different days? Um, absolutely. My morning routines vary widely from weekdays to weekends. From Monday to Friday, I have to get up early to prepare for work. What do you do in the evening? Um, from 6 p.m. onward, I mostly stay in my room, enjoying solitary pastimes, such as watching Netflix or listening to music, while playing with my adorable guinea pig, Ollie, to unwind after a hard-working day. Do you like technology? Mm, as a matter of fact, I do. I think that technology is immensely beneficial both at work and in daily life. What was the last piece of technology you bought? Hmm, let me see. Um, it's been quite a while since I last bought something, but I believe that gadget was a pair of AirPods cutting edge earbuds from Apple because for my work, from time to time, I have to communicate with my clients and I wanted to listen to them more effectively. What do you want to buy in the future? Mm, in the future, I'm planning to buy a tablet from a famous brand like Samsung or Apple so that I can keep up with my work on the go. That is the end of part one. We will now continue with part two. For this part, I will show you some questions. Please do not touch the question booklet. You will have one minute to read these questions, think about your answers, and then you will have one to two minutes to speak. You can take notes in the one minute time if you wish. You have some note paper over there and your pen. Describe a problem with something you bought in the store or online. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. For this part, I would like to talk about the time when I bought a shirt on a popular e-commerce site named Shopee. Despite the fact that I had read the description very carefully before ordering, when I got the shirt, I came to realize that it was too big for me. It didn't fit me perfectly as I had hoped. 
So uh, the I was beside myself with rage. And the very first thing I did was to complain to the seller. Um, fortunately, she sincerely apologized for the mistake and promised to exchange it for a brand new one. From her tone, I could see that she felt terrible about the mishap, so I decided to let it slide. Okay, your time is up. I will stop you there, and we will now continue with part three. Please put the note paper and your pen to the side. I will now ask you a question related to your response and some questions connected to this topic. Did you tell anybody about this? Yes, I did. I told my sister who lives with me to blow off some steam and also to help as a reminder to be more careful in the future when ordering articles of clothing online. Let's talk a little bit more about uh, customer service. Is customer service important? Personally, I would say that customer service is extremely important because, uh, for example, when I go to the store, I would be pleased if the salespeople are helpful and can give me some advice on what to buy. This makes me feel good about spending my hard-earned money. Why don't some companies focus on customer service? Um... In my opinion, there are indeed a wide range of causes why business enterprises don't pay attention to this aspect. Um, and the most common reason is probably the fact that they don't care. Uh, they only care about profit instead of satisfied customers, which ultimately often leads to their own downfall. Is it true that expensive brands have good customer service? Mm, not necessarily, but generally speaking, the more high-end the product or the brand is, the more funds tend to be invested in customer service. So I could see why some people might think that. Can you trust online reviews? Um... When it comes to online reviews, I think that shoppers should treat them with caution because a lot of companies out there fake the reviews to show that their goods are well received by the public and to trick people into buying with confidence. Do you think that a product is just an idea? Wow, uh, that's a difficult question. Uh, give me a moment to think. I think that in this day and age, it's um, not just about a tangible product, but more about an ideal image created by a company that everyone loves. Um, so I think the statement is relatively true. That is the end of part three. That concludes the speaking section of the IELTS exam. You will have your mark in two days online after you finish the other sections and your official certificate in the mail in 10 days. Goodbye. Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Wow, thank you, Trang, for that interview and sharing that experience with us. I'm sure many of our viewers will find it very helpful, especially since you used a lot of great vocabulary and expressions naturally in context. Would you care to show us your uh, official Band 9 certificate? You've earned it and you should be proud of it and we'd love to see it. Yes, okay. So here is my certificate. Wonderful. Thank you. And now I'd love to ask you a few questions so that we can get some further insight on how you achieved this highly desired score. And uh, hopefully many of our viewers will be able to put your advice to good use and, and achieve the same. What do you think are the most important aspects of your speaking that led to this band nine score? Um, the most important thing was to show everything I've got. In short, to add complexity 
to my sentences by using a lot of compound and complex words as well as structures. Uh, so rather than simply say a verb or an adjective, I made a mental note to add an adverb into the mix. For example, uh, immensely beneficial instead of just beneficial. Um, vocabulary and expressions were also much more powerful. So I used uh, business enterprises indeed to uh, beside myself with rage or let it slide. I see that you didn't really talk too much about pronunciation, but I must say that your pronunciation is quite good. Uh, how did you improve to sound so clear? Uh, oh yes, I didn't re even realize that uh, because now to me, it feels like a given. Pronunciation was actually the very first thing I wanted to focus on when I started learning English. Um, so I really wanted to study what is going on in the English sound system, which I have to say is so different from Vietnamese. Um, aside from countless hours watching sitcoms, talk shows, and stand-ups, I also looked into the IPA, or the International Phonetic Alphabet, which is an amazing tool to learn how to make every sound correctly. That's a great tip. Um, so the IPA is, uh, is a good starting point and we'll put a link in the video description um, for that so that people can look it up and um, get going in the right direction for uh, clear pronunciation because as you said, that's definitely one of the big challenges for many, many people in Vietnam and in Eastern Asia as well in general. So we'll help out there a bit. Do you think that candidates can get a high score if they speak to the examiner like they're speaking to a friend? And the reason I ask that is because there, there are a lot of teachers and a lot of videos out there giving this advice like, oh, just speak with the examiner as if they're your friend. Is that a good approach to getting a good score? Okay, so no, I would actually advise against that. Um, even though the language used in IELTS speaking is more relaxed than writing, for instance, candidates are encouraged to say, I'm gonna, instead of I'm going to. At the end of the day, it's still a test. So I think test takers should try to be professional, should try to show their English command in the best light. Definitely uh, refrain from using daily phrases like, you know, or uh, and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, also, I think speaking in many very short forms, like when we speak with our friends, we just say, yeah, sure, or um, I did this on the weekend. But in the IELTS, it's more important to really speak in full sentences without going off topic. Like expand your ideas. What do you think is the most common misconception among Vietnamese about the IELTS? Um, well, personally, I think the biggest misconception is that uh, your true English ability will show in the results, which is often not the case uh, because flawless test-taking skills are also needed. So candidates should study the structures of the IELTS test and come up with detailed strategies to tackle every section effectively. What is your single most important tip for Vietnamese learners or learners in general so that they can improve their scores? Just one? Just one, just one if you could only get one single tip, yes. It's hard to choose, but if I were to give one tip only, I would say uh, to create an English-filled environment, to immerse yourself in the language. So uh, if it's a working adult like myself, I say uh, try to read CNN or the New York Times or watch the news in English every day 
and uh, students can watch talk shows, listen to podcasts, um, and join a community where they can speak English with each other, like your channel. So um, I don't know if it's the most helpful piece of advice. Because it's not a specific tactic that can be applied right away, but I believe that in the long term, it will do wonders to your practical skills. What are you planning to do now that you have this perfect score in the IELTS speaking section? Um. Well, in terms of. Personal objectives because I have already gotten a nine for speaking. Now I might try to see if I can get a nine for writing as well, uh, because this time I got an eight. Um, I might also create some content related to this topic to share my experience, my take on the IELTS test, and hopefully I can help others to improve their scores. Well, we will certainly uh, make sure to follow you and check out the content that you're creating because clearly you have a lot of know-how and legitimacy uh, regarding uh, the IELTS, and uh, we will uh, share that with uh, with our viewers in the coming weeks and months as you grow and develop your content creation. Um, what was your experience with, you know, using our website? You you briefly alluded to joining this channel, and I know that you mentioned to me uh, as we were setting up this project that uh, that you did join our channel yourself. Can you tell me, just in a few words, what was your experience with our YouTube channel and maybe with our websites? Um, yes. So uh, when I was preparing for the test this time. I was looking at a lot of IELTS specific channels, and uh, your YouTube channel jumped out as the like the most impressive one because I really liked your teaching style. So uh, it's very clear and it's very easy to follow. Um, and the content um, is quite good. I actually got uh, many inspirations from your uh, mock test, mock speaking test, uh, so that I can improve. So I could improve my uh, my interview. Awesome. Well, I'm happy to hear that. That um, that means a lot to us because it vindicates that what we're doing is effective and it works. And we love getting feedback from our viewers. So if anybody else has opinions or uh, feedback for us, we would love to hear from you. We'll include uh, the email um, on the screen here and in the description below as well, so you can get a hold of us. Thank you, Trang, for being with us and uh, sharing your insights. It was extremely valuable, and I look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. Uh, yes, it was my pleasure to be here today, and I want to wish everybody good luck on their test in the future, and I look forward to sharing more content with you. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video. Click right up here, and click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.